Jeff and Joan Buckingham had a 1,300 pound challenge. Cow number 1212 had just given birth to a stillborn calf. She felt nauseated and unsteady, lost and despondent. Challenge number two. The Buckinghams had recently acquired an orphaned calf for 1212, a baby bull. Longing for a mother and trying to find its place on the Buckingham Ranch, requiring time, attention, bottle feeding, and lots of care. The Buckinghams were worried the well-being of both of these lonely, grief-stricken, traumatized creatures required a different kind of strategy with out-of-the-box thinking. And that just happens to be my specialty. You see, I'm Susan Vaughn, the Animal Whisperer. I do something unusual, something most people have never heard of, and many people believe it's impossible. I communicate with animals. In fact, for the past 30 years, I've been an animal communication specialist, working with clients all over the world and acting as a conduit between humans and animals, connecting them on a deeper level to resolve problems and forge a clearer path of understanding. And the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the hundreds of human-animal relationships I've been able to strengthen in homes, on farms, and on ranches across the nation and around the world. Okay, so how is all this possible? Well, I've always been in the communication business, writing books, hosting talk shows, and broadcasting news. But in 1990, I added telepathic communication to my list of professional skills. I once wondered how my degrees in psychology and communication would come together. Well, <laughs> now I know. Which brings us to the story of my interaction with Jeff and Joan Buckingham and their cow 1212. My name is Jeff Buckingham and I grew up in uh, Glastonbury, Connecticut. My name is Joan Buckingham. Um, I've been here in San Luis Obispo area for 44 years and I am a rancher. Well, we have about 50 cows and four bulls. Four horses, 10 cats, five dogs, one desert tortoise, and two chickens. 1212 had a history of having twins, and twins tend to have more difficult births. We found 1212 way up on the hill and back all by herself, and obviously having been in labor for a long time. The first challenge we had was to get her down the hill so we could get her into the chute and help her get that calf out. We got her in and we reached in and got the calf's front legs and pulled the calf, but the, unfortunately the calf was dead. After the first calf was born, I reached in really far to see if there was another calf, because she had a history of having twins, and I couldn't feel another calf. But then the next day, Joan noticed that she wasn't doing very well. I ended up calling the vet and he came out and there there was indeed a calf in there still. And that meant one more trip into the squeeze chute for 1212. Yet another traumatic restraint and uncomfortable surgery was required to dislodge the second fetus. And the pain of a second stillbirth put 1212 over the edge when it came to humans. She was charging and uncooperative. At that point, our normal practice is to find another live calf to try to give to the cow so she can use her milk and raise that calf. The calf that we found was about two and a half months old. So that was going to be a challenge to have her accept this calf and have the calf accept a new mother because this calf had been bottle fed. It's almost impossible in my past experience to get a several month old calf that's been fed off a bottle to go back and nurse a cow. As a matter of fact, I don't know that we've ever achieved that. So that's when we called Susan and said, you know, we're gonna need a lot of help here um, to work this out. The Buckinghams love their animals, but they're also business people, ranchers. 
They knew that if the cow agreed to accept the baby bull as her own, it would be super cost effective, freeing up the labor now needed to bottle feed the young bull several times a day. Well, much of the time, I'm the last call, the last resort for lost causes and folks seeking to positively affect difficult animal behaviors. And although a skipped beat in my heart let me know 1212's case was going to be a monumental challenge, I answered their call. Susan was able to talk to 1212, and at this point, 1212 was a raving maniac. I mean, she we couldn't get anywhere near her, but she did, with Susan's help, accept the calf. The way, and the way that we do that is we skin one of the dead calves, put the skin on the new calf, and then present the new calf to the cow. And with Susan's help, she accepted that calf pretty quickly. What was a little bit harder was getting the calf to accept the cow because the calf had been used to drinking from a bottle. Well, up to now, my focus had been on Cow 1212, accepting the youngster as her own. But when I turned my attention to the young bull, there was a whole different set of issues to work out. For one thing, he told me he was having a hard time locating 1212's udder. With telepathic pictures, though, I showed patches to go down much lower to the ground, much lower than where the people had held the bottle, and looked for a slippery appendage softer than the rubber bottle nipple. I told him we needed him to gain weight, not lose it. And he'd already lost a couple of pounds. I remember Susan said, you have to get your head down low to get on to the cow's udder and to be able to drink. And after working for a few days together and, and a number of conversations with Susan and uh, the calf did start drinking from the mm -hmm. cow and the cow calmed yeah. down a little bit after she had a calf. Yeah, and you know, 1212 is very protective of the new calf. Um, and she, she just knew that was her calf now. Cow 1212 and Patches were finally bonded as surrogate mother and young strong bull. But feeding a young cow two to three times a day with a bottle is labor intensive. And on this ranch where the cows are considered kin, Getting them to take care of one another naturally is a relief that ramps up the ranch's efficiency. Just a win-win for both of them. It was a win for Patches, who now had a, a wonderful mother. It was wonderful for 1212 to be a mother again after having two stillborn calves. And it was wonderful for us to be able to achieve something that we had never been able to achieve before. And it was also a good move for the ranch business because we now had a calf that we could sell at nine months old yeah. who was well raised. Well, I think Susan is an amazing person and that we're lucky to have her in our lives and to be able to help us take care of our animals. Susan allows us to approach issues and problems with our animal friends in a completely different way and gives us a whole new perspective. You see, an animal communicator builds bridges between people and their animal companions, and it's time we humans recognize that cooperative living and direct communication as well with all sentient life. It's not only possible, but imperative for our future health here on planet Earth. I say down with anthropocentrism, because even the lowliest insect can be the most important link in the chain of life that, if missing, could bring down the entire creation. I ask that we start with respect for all of creation, healing our relationship with all living things, including our incredible animal friends. My passion is to live in a community and to be connected. I love the connections with my animal friends and with people. And that's one of the things I love about working with Susan is the enhanced connections I have with our animal friends. And I also kind of like the fact that not everybody believes what Susan does because I enjoy pushing the boundaries of what any of us believe. 
and some people accept that and listen to it and and ask for her phone number and want to have her help with their animals and other people shake their heads and say you guys are crazy how can anybody telepathically talk to animals that's that's never going to happen and and we kind of laugh and say well yeah you, you well, can see you. yeah you can see it your way we'll see it our way <laughs> as in every consultation though i was reminded that each animal and situation is unique and brings its own benevolence to bear and i'm so grateful check out my youtube channel for short movies about animal communication why people called me what they experienced and final outcomes of our work together. Hit the subscribe button, like, and add your comments. My website is at animalwhisperer.net where you can sign up for my newsletter, like my blog, and watch my movies. Tune in next time when the mother of two young boys asks her bearded dragon couple to back off on recreation. Too many beardies, she told me, and she'd run out of people who could give those babies a permanent home. Why did the Beardies say they were having so many hatchlings? The Beardies, on our next episode of The Animal Whisperer.